Did you know it was possible to conduct piracy legally? The discovery of the New World caused France, Portugal, Spain, and Britain to scramble for its vast resources. Often, these European powers conflicted over the resources and involved private citizens in aiding their endeavors. Over time, these private citizens proved to be valuable assets of espionage. Join us in this Liberty episode as we discuss famous English privateers, a private vessel or individual who engages in warfare pursuant to a commission of war is known as a privateer. Since robbery with violence was ordinary at sea, during the early 19th century, merchant vessels were allowed to protect their interests from pirates by carrying arms. During wartime, a delegated authority or sovereign issued authority referred to as letters of mark to certain individuals to attack, plunder, and capture enemy vessels. The holder of the mark was empowered to utilize all permissible hostilities at sea, including attacking and plundering foreign ships and kidnapping prize crews for ransom. Captured vessels were liable to sale and condemnation under prize law their proceeds being distributed among the privateer sponsors, captain, crew, and ship owners. Part of the prize also went to the authority that granted the commission. This practice enabled governments to reduce the cost of financing wars while providing privateers an opportunity to increase their income immensely. Having been authorized by the queen, plundering Spanish, French, and Portuguese ships was technically legal in England, despite the two nations not being officially at war. The following are Queen Elizabeth's most remarkable sea dogs. Sir Francis Drake is one of the most successful privateers of the Golden Age. Born in 1563, Drake made his first voyage to the Americas with his cousin and fellow privateer, John Hawkins. During his voyages with John Hawkins, they attacked and plundered Portuguese towns and vessels along the West African coast. The slaves captured during their raids were sold to Spanish settlers in the Americas. In the Battle of San Juan de Ula in 1568, Drake and his mates returned to England with silver and gold worth over 40,000 British pounds. In 1570 to 71, Drake attacked Spanish vessels in the West Indies capturing enormous amounts of treasure. Drake was a lifelong enemy of the Spaniards who considered him a cutthroat pirate. They later branded him El Draque, the dragon. In 1572, Drake embarked on his first independent mission with two small vessels, Swan and Pasha. In 1573, Drake captured over 20 tons of silver and gold from Spanish treasure vessels. Besides being a successful privateer, Drake conducted the second global circumnavigation following the Magellan Ecano expedition. This made him the first Englishman to circumnavigate the world. Queen Elizabeth knighted him seven months later aboard the Golden Hind. Sir Walter Raleigh was born in 1552. He hailed from a prominent family as he was the nephew of Sir Francis Drake and half-brother of the famous explorer Sir Humphrey Gilbert. In 1578, Raleigh attempted to voyage to the Americas with Sir Humphrey Gilbert, but their ships were caught in a storm. Between 1579 and 1583, Sir Raleigh aided the suppression of Ireland's rebellions known as the Desmond Rebellions. This made him rise rapidly in Queen Elizabeth's favor, and he was granted a royal charter empowering him to colonize, explore, and rule British settlements in the New World. In compensation, Raleigh would get a percentage of the minerals mined there. In 1587, Raleigh was appointed the captain of the Queen's Guard. Raleigh was always by the Queen's side. In 1591, in a secret wedding, Sir Raleigh wedded Elizabeth Throckmorton, one of the Queen's ladies-in-waiting. One year later, the Queen discovered the marriage and imprisoned the couple in the Tower of London. Henceforth, Sir Raleigh fell from the good graces of the Crown. 
He was accused of conspiring against Queen Elizabeth's successor, James I, in 1603, and was condemned to death. On the day of execution, while on the scaffold, the sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. In 1616, Raleigh was released, and after conducting an unsuccessful expedition searching for El Dorado, he attacked treasure ships in defiance of the king. The death sentence was reinstated, and he was executed in 1618 at Whitehall. Sir Martin Frobisher was born in 1535. His uncle, Sir John York, a merchant and master of the mint, raised and educated him in London. In London, he acquainted himself with sailors and cultivated an interest in navigation and exploration. In 1544, Frobisher embarked on his first voyage as a cabin boy. In 1555, Frobisher was commissioned as a privateer. Frobisher soon established himself as a master privateer by attacking French ships along the West African coast. He was also arrested severally on piracy charges, but was never prosecuted. Frobisher was a masterful commander and a shrewd leader, later appointed vice admiral. In 1588, during the Spanish Armada, he held command of the Channel Fleet. He was knighted due to his exemplary leadership during the Armada. In 1594, during the siege of Fort Corazon, Frobisher succumbed to bullet wounds. Born in Plymouth in 1532, sea rover John Hawkins was introduced to naval activities early in life. His father was a successful sea captain who traded across the world. John often accompanied his father during his business trips, where he learned critical aspects of leadership and navigation. When his father died, he left his two sons a fleet of ships, which they used to continue his business. While he is referred to as the first Englishman to trade in slaves, history shows us that he was not the first to ferry slaves to England. However, he was among the first people to benefit from the triangle trade where merchants sold supplies that were in shortage to people in the colonies. Having established himself as a successful slave trader, Queen Elizabeth invested in John Hawkins by leasing the 700-ton vessel Jesus of Lubbock to conduct a more extensive operation. At the height of his career, Hawkins diverted his focus to counter espionage for the crown. In 1578, he was appointed the treasurer of the Royal Navy, where he instigated widespread reforms. He was eager to ensure that Britain had the best navy in the world. During a treasure hunting voyage in the Caribbean in 1595, together with Francis Drake, Hawkins fell sick and died at sea. Thank you for listening to this episode. We hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. Like, share, and subscribe to Liberty for more.